Uh, let's talk about this and the ongoing presidential race with our guests. And we welcome from Newsmax Washington, Dina Bass, the former national press secretary for Dr. Ben Carson's campaign, now a partner at Bass Public Affairs, and via Skype from Charlotte, North Carolina, proud alumna of the University of North Carolina, D.C. McAllister. I don't give her trouble for that, even though I'm an NC State graduate. She's the senior contributor with The Federalist. It is so good to have you both with us tonight. And ladies, as you might expect, the telephone is ringing off the hook. Let's get back to the calls at 1-877-NEWSMAX. First up, from Idaho, Harold is on the line. Hi, Harold. Hi, J.D. How are you? Doing fine, sir. Um, I, I have to applaud you on your border issue. I, I love it when you're in there and keep fighting for us if you can some way. You bet I will. We have to may, we have to establish and reinforce our borders and get a handle on immigration. That's absolutely yes, the case. Now, I understand you uh, you have some thoughts about uh, the veterans and specifically about what Donald Trump had to say today. Yes, sir. Um, I'm a veteran myself. I served during the Vietnam War. And uh, I, I heard the veteran call in, and I think his name is Mark, if I'm correct. Mm -hmm. Go they, uh, they tried the same thing with me on my medications. So they, they tried taking me, give me the wrong medication, and they tried to take me off for months. I actually called my U.S. Senator, Jim Risch, and he, his office got it straightened out. He got me with a patient advocate, and he got me with, with a new doctor that got things straightened out for me. So I would suggest that Mark do that. That, that is right, uh, Harold, and I'm so glad you called because you pointed out, and, and you've been watching for a while because it was last week when Mark called in from Virginia and said his member of Congress uh, really did not help him. But you're proving, as you mentioned, what Senator Risch was able to do to help you, that that's what your senators and your member of Congress are there for. And so we're glad, Harold, that worked out for you, and we appreciate the fact that you watch us every night out there in Idaho here on Newsmax Prime. Uh, ladies, let me turn to you with some of the discussions going on politically. For example, Dina Bass, your old boss, Dr. Ben Carson, I saw him on TV the other day. He said, America is like a cruise ship headed over Niagara Falls. Is that an apt uh, description of where we are right now? You know, I think that Dr. Carson makes a very valid point. Um, we're, in a, we're in a very uh, unique position in our country right now, and I think that one of the things that's great about what we see in someone like Donald Trump, who is definitely loud and proud, is that um, Americans see someone who is proud to be an American. And I think um, he is unashamed of saying that he loves his country and, um, and he's passionate about America. Now, does that mean that we, that we always want him to be as as loud and um, kind of the language that he uses? No, not necessarily. I think that he can tone that down, but I think that in someone like Donald Trump, we can, um, you know, he's, he's brought a different type of uh, uh, leader to the, to the stage, and I think that he can right the ship. It, I think it's terrifying a lot of people, but I think Dr. Carson is right. We are on the edge, but I do believe that we are in a place right now where, it can, where the ship can be um, turned around. Well, D.C. McAllister, to, uh, to borrow from Dr. Carson's imagery, and also the report we just saw from John Bachman, if this thing ended up in the House of Representatives, uh, it, it could be a real challenge, even though there's a constitutional uh, template there for what to do if no one gets a majority of electoral votes. Tonight we're hearing who? David French, the, the writer for National Review, that is who Bill Kristol is asking to run as the independent conservative, as a former Cruz supporter, D.C. What's your reaction to that and the possibility that this thing might one day end up in the House of Representatives? It says to me that people like Bill Kristol and others who are never Trumpers are tone deaf. Uh, to pick someone like David French, who is a respectable, honorable man who has served our country, but he writes for a National Review. He's seen as part of more of the insider media, the establishment media, whether that's fair or not, that's the perception. And this move for a third party seems to be part of an establishment, a more insider mechanism that's going forward, and then they're arranging this so that they can get a way to stop Donald Trump. It's all about stopping Donald Trump and throwing it into the House. And I think when you, ha when you put it that way, in an anti-establishment year, 
that you're going to have a lot of angry people on your hands. Now, it doesn't mean that the process isn't right and that if you don't have the majority of the electoral votes, that it doesn't go to the House, that it does. But how do we get there? What's the process of getting there? And if we have a bunch of people putting forth establishment-type characters like this in order to stop Donald Trump even in the Electoral College, you're going to have problems with your electorate and you, who, are, who already see like the its system is rigged against them. So they're going to be angry about that. And I think they'll feel like they're disenfranchised. Well, let's go to a guy who we are empowering tonight. He's already uh, exercising or plans to exercise the power of the franchise from Baltimore, Maryland. Richard is on the phone. Richard, uh, your assessment of the campaign thus far, sir? Well, this is mostly um, a comment on the, the uh, polls about Trump being disliked by so many groups of people. Mm hmm. It, it, it's just a bunch of liberal media nonsense. I'm here in Baltimore. I'm in Democrat Central, and I'm telling you, I've spoken to at minimum 100 women that were previously Democrats, and they love Trump with a passion. Well, that's the scene in Baltimore. Let's ask the ladies with us. Let's ask uh, Dina, who's across the Potomac there in D.C. Are you sensing, you know, the big question and the big the, the big talking point is that that Donald Trump has a problem with women. Are, are you seeing that, Dina? You know, I think that he definitely has um, uh, the mainstream media certainly wants to paint this picture that he has a problem with women. But I also think that we need to look at Hillary Clinton who has a very, very huge problem with women. She would not be running from a 74-year-old socialist um, if she had success with um, attracting women voters. Donald Trump, I think that his, his strength in language is certainly attracting moms who are um, concerned about security issues, issues that, um, you know, uh, pocketbook issues. I think that women are attracted to those issues as well, and they're attracted to Donald Trump because of that. You know, so this, does he have some work to do in terms of curbing his language? Absolutely. But this idea that um, that he will not beat Hillary because she's a woman is, you know, I don't know where people are getting that from. And, and the gentleman in Baltimore, I, I think that he makes a valid point in, in these very Democrat areas. Donald Trump is uh, winning over people who are hugely passionate about uh, the, the new process. And I, and I also agree with D.C. in that, you know, if, if, if we're trying to run a third party candidate right now, the people who have come to the process, who have never voted before, who've never been involved, the enthusiasm that Donald Trump has um, created, those people will stay home. And not only will we lose um, the White House, we'll lose it to Hillary Clinton. And that means a, a Supreme Court that I'm just not comfortable with. About a minute left, D.C., got to ask you about something else in the news. Sirius XM Radio barring or at least suspending Glenn Beck from the uh, Patriot Channel because of a conversation he had with uh, with uh, Brad Thor uh, concerning uh, a, a suggestion that uh, that Mr. Trump might face assassination for 30 seconds for your comment on Mr. Beck's suspension. Well, I respect both those men, but I listened to what was said. And when you say that, you know, you would hope a patriot would do something illegal and a very bad thing to the president, if nothing else can be done, I, I have a problem with that. It's also ignoring the fact that we do have other recourses. We have the Article 5 in the states. If we have an out of, uh, out of control president, we have a way to get rid of him and to do something about that. So I think that that was wrong of them and the suspension is understandable. And uh, first, last, and always, the Constitution. We talked about the House of Representatives. You also talked about the, the possibility of impeachment. Two unimpeachable guests, uh, D.C. and uh, Dina. Thanks very much. Back with more after this.